In section 5.3, we build off of what we did in section 5.2, where we had systems of equations, and we were looking for a solution to a system of equations, which was represented by the point where two lines cross each other on the graph. This time, we're changing a system of linear equations into a system of linear inequalities. These, again, will come up when we get into the linear programming problems, where we'll build inequalities which look like this here, like 2x plus 9y is less than or equal to 3. So what this means is that whatever values of x and y you plug in here, if plugging in those x and y values leads to a number less than or equal to 3, that is a point that fits this inequality, that satisfies it. If whatever values of x and y you plug in are not less than or equal to 3, if they're greater than 3, then that would be a point that is not satisfying this inequality. It's a point that's not part of the solution here. So before we handle ones like this, we can back up a little bit and think about simpler versions of these linear inequalities and think about what their graphs look like. Basically, when you graph a linear equation, you get a line on the graph. When you graph an inequality, you get a line and then one side of that line or the other. So one side of the line that matches the inequality is going to be shaded in. That's the short version of all this and everything else we do in this section is just the details behind that. But that's the basic conclusion. If, for instance, we wanted to graph the inequality y less than or equal to 2, we would change that less than or equal to into an equal sign and then graph the line that corresponds to y equals 2. That's this horizontal line at 2. And then shade one side or the other, whichever side makes sense. In this case, less than or equal to 2, we're looking for ones that have a y coordinate that are less than or equal to 2. So everything below that point. So it'll be shaded in. There's a typo here. It says 6. That should be 2 or less. All the points whose y coordinates are 2 or less will be solutions. So that's why we've shaded in this point underneath, the points underneath that line. So then there's a, another example with a vertical line. Notice the difference here, that this says x greater than negative 1 and not greater than or equal to. If it were greater than or equal to, then it would be all the points on the line, x equals negative 1, and all the points to the right of that. But notice that just because it's greater than and not greater than or equal to, we have to distinguish that somehow. And so the way we do that visually is we draw a dashed line here. So in short, whenever you have an inequality that's like less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, that includes the number you're looking at. And so you draw it solid. If you just have greater than or less than, that does not include negative 1 in this case. So we draw that dashed. And then everything else, as I said, all the other examples are just variations of this. But that's the basic idea, that an inequality, a linear inequality like this, is going to be the line, either solid or dashed, and then one side of that shaded in. So here's another example. This one's a little more complicated. But if we graph the line x minus y equals 1 first, notice we're using the intercepts to do that, just because it's the easiest way to graph this particular line. Then we, we draw that line. Notice that we draw it solid because we have less than or equal to. It includes 1. So we draw that line solid. Now the question is, of course, which side of this line should we shade in? Should we shade in this part above or the part below? There are several ways to do this, but perhaps the easiest way is just to pick a what I call a test point. So the simplest thing, and one that we'll generally use if we can, is the point 0, 0, this origin here. The only reason we wouldn't be able to use the origin is if this line happened to pass through it, in which case it wouldn't tell us any new information. But if we pick this origin as the test point and we plug 0, 0 into this inequality, if we get a true statement, that means that 0, 0 is one of the solutions. And so it happens that everything on that side would be shaded in. If we plug in 0, 0 and we get a false statement, that means that that is not a solution, so it's the other side that should be shaded in. So you pick a test point, plug it in, and see if it satisfies 
the inequality. In this case, if you plug in 0, 0, you get a true statement because 0 minus 0 is less than or equal to 1. So that's the side that gets shaded in on the upper left side. So that's a general principle for doing this. Again, as I say, there are other ways to do it, but that's the quickest and easiest way is just to use a test point. And again, the origin is often a simple test point to use. So there's another example of this. This one, notice, is greater than, not greater than or equal to, so it'll be a dashed line. And again, you can pick a test point and check it to see which side to shade in. So you can see that example as well. Then we come to systems of inequalities, meaning we can have more than one inequality, and we want to figure out what points satisfy all of them at once. What points are allowed by all the inequalities. The short version of this is that if you're looking for, say, two inequalities, and you want the solution to the system, if you shade in all of the answers for the first one and all the answers for the second one, whatever got shaded both times is the solution to both of them. In other words, the overlap of the individual solutions. So here's an example where we have these two individual examples. Whatever these equations are, they led to these pictures. If we draw them on the same graph, notice that the part that got shaded both times is the part that's below both graphs. So this kind of triangular region down below both the blue and the red graphs. So with that in mind, you can redraw it just with that piece showing, and then you can see several other examples. Again, given another system of inequalities, you can see what would happen and what the solution would look like at the end, as well as this one for you to try yourself. So that brings the conclusion of systems of inequalities. The idea again is we want to find what part of a graph, what section, what region fits all of these inequalities. There will be examples we'll see later with three inequalities on the same picture, and it follows the same pattern. We're just looking for what fits into all of these inequalities and makes them all true at the same time.